We have seen that the general solution of a system of linear differential equations is of this form. Now we want to understand the qualitative behavior of such a solution. The first term, minus a inverse times b, is just a constant. So we will ignore it and just focus on the sum on the right side. Remember, c, i are arbitrary prefactors. Because of the superposition principle, you can combine the solutions arbitrarily. So c, i are arbitrary. a, i are the eigenvectors of matrix A. And lambda, i are the eigenvalues of matrix A. If the eigenvalues are real, then the solution is relatively easy to interpret. For each eigenvalue lambda, there are three possibilities. Lambda can be smaller than zero, it can equal zero, or it can be greater than zero. We know that the corresponding exponential solution would decay for lambda less than zero, would stay constant for lambda equals zero, and would exponentially grow for lambda greater than zero. So we see this behavior here as well, but in the directions of eigenvector a. Two combinations are particularly interesting. The node and the saddle point. We speak of a node if all eigenvalues are strictly negative or all eigenvalues are strictly positive while for a saddle node, some eigenvalues are negative, others are positive. You see a few examples down here in the figure. So this is an eigenvector. And if the solution starts in the direction of an eigenvector, then it would simply decay or grow along this eigenvector. This solution points in the direction of exactly one eigenvector if all but one ci are zero. So the vector of weighting factors could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then the solution would point in the direction of the fourth eigenvector and there's no contribution of the other eigenvectors. This is a way to make the solution point into just one eigenvector direction. So if that is the case, then only one exponential function plays a role and we have a strict exponential decay or growth in the direction of that eigenvector. So here in the left graph, we assume that all eigenvectors are negative, so we would have a decay along the eigenvector. So if we start somewhere here, the solution would just move towards the origin, get closer and closer to it. And I've drawn the points closer and closer because it's an exponential decay, so it slows down as it approaches the origin. The same is true along the other direction. And here I actually assume that the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 are both equal. And that means that any rotated version of A1 and A2 also forms a set of eigenvectors. And the decay rate in all directions is the same. And that's the reason why no matter where you come from, you always have the same decay process. So that is a very symmetric situation. In the second figure, you see a situation where the two eigenvalues are also negative, but they have different magnitude. So there's one direction, namely this one, in which the decay is relatively fast, and another direction in which the decay is relatively slow. As a result, if you start somewhere, the main decay process happens in the direction of the yellow, 
eigenvector, so of A1. And only as this A1 direction gets smaller and smaller, um, does the decay in the A1 direction slow down and becomes comparable in the direction of A2. If you just invert the sign of the eigenvalues, the dynamics remains the same, it just runs sort of backwards in time. So remember, the essential component of the solution is the exponential of lambda i t. And you can imagine that if lambda i changes sign, that is equivalent to changing the time direction. So if you replace t by minus t, it's the same as replacing lambda by minus lambda. So for sine flipped lambdas, you would just get the opposite dynamics in all these cases. Somewhat interesting combination is if lambda 1 and lambda 2 have opposite sign. This is the case here in the third example. A1 has a negative eigenvalue. A2 has a positive eigenvalue. And that is why if you start somewhere you have a decay in the A1 direction but a growth in the A2 direction. Yeah? and that combines into this dynamics. Please note that a growth in A2 direction does not mean that it literally goes in to the direction where A2 points because the eigenvectors have arbitrary sign, right? So it can grow in either direction, either positive or negative direction of A2. So we see that if all of our eigenvalues are real, it's relatively easy to understand how the system behaves. In the directions of the eigenvectors with negative eigenvalue, the solution will decay. In the direction of eigenvectors with positive eigenvalue, the solution will grow. And if there are directions where lambda is zero, the solution would just stay there. If, for instance, we have a situation like that, where the eigenvalue in the A1 direction is negative and the eigenvalue in the A2 direction is zero, then if we start at some point, there will be no movement in the A2 direction and there will be a decay in the A1 direction, right? So the dynamic simply leads on to this a2 axis. Here we already see that it is relatively easy to read off the eigenvalues, the overall stability of the fixed point. You can imagine if all eigenvalues are less than zero then the solution will always decay towards the origin, while if there's only one eigenvalue greater than zero then it will decay in, in, in at least this one direction. If there's an eigenvalue 0, it is indifferent in that direction, so it would be Lyapunov stable in that direction, but not asymptotically stable. 